Oh boy, and Jeannie, uh, in your latest piece for The New Yorker entitled, The Case Against Trump is Strong, But There Are Problems Ahead, you write about the inevitable issues that will arise now that the DOJ is charging the former president. And, and I just want to read one piece of, of your article. The elements of the crimes are so straightforward to establish uh, considering the facts alleged that one wonders whether Trump wanted to be prosecuted. I can't imagine. I mean, these charges are so unbelievably serious, but what, it, what are some of the conundrums that the country ultimately will confront because of this? Well, when people found out about the indictment, I think some of them may have celebrated thinking, oh, this is the end of, end of the Trump's 2024 presidential campaign but in fact that's that uh, that's very unlikely because there is no law saying that he can't keep running even while indicted and in fact we have a presidential candidate from the past who has who has done that it's uh, Eugene Debs from 1920 he ran for president from jail um, while he was imprisoned under the Espionage Act um, which is the same law mm. that Trump is indicted under um, for Eugene Debs, it was for anti-war speech, and um, that was considered seditious speech. And for, for Trump, this is a, a much more serious and actually valid allegation, which is the, the retain, retention of classified documents. But And then the other problem is that if he were actually to be convicted, if everything went well and he were to be convicted and he were imprisoned, that still wouldn't pre prevent him from becoming president of the United States. There is, in fact, no law or constitutional provision that would prevent that. I'm beginning to sweat a little bit. No, uh, no, I understand that completely. And I think Donald Trump understands that um, very much so. Would, would like to use a lot of this to kind of fill in, if I may, uh, Jeannie, his narrative. Um, this indictment uh, fits into the entire uh, sort of his, his platform of a witch hunt. Um, and that could be difficult uh, along the way, especially to, for prosecutors to try and really keep this down the line, just the facts, and, and keep the noise out of this. He, Donald Trump is going to want all the noise possible during this trial. That's right. And he, this will become a platform for campaigning for president. And mm -hmm. we, we have yet to see, but it is very possible that this will give him a boost to actually win back the White House. That is a real possibility that we cannot ignore. And then once, um, let's say that he were to be elected president, at that mm -hmm. point, he would be the president of the United States with control of the Justice Department. The Justice Department is an agency under the president. And so he would have the power to get the uh, Justice Department, if the case were still ongoing, let's say, he could have the Justice Department drop the case altogether. And if he were in fact convicted already, then the Justice Department has a position, um, first of all, that, that the, the, if he were not convicted yet, the Justice Department couldn't keep, keep prosecuting him under their own legal opinion from the OLC, the Office of Legal Counsel from 2000, that says you don't prosecute a currently sitting president. And then, of course, there's the possibility of a presidential pardon that he would try to use for himself. Um, and that's just uncharted territory. We've never had any litigation over that. And I just cannot imagine that a Supreme Court would say that that is constitutional for a president to pardon himself. <laughs> but there are arguments that you can make based on the text of the Constitution, which does not prohibit that kind of pardon.